Welcome everybody uh, to this first webinar for UK MIDS, particularly focusing on our next study, which is investigating PPH in midwifery units. I'm Rachel Rowe, the head of UK MIDS, and I'm joined here by Ginny Mount, UK MIDS research midwife. Welcome, thank you for joining us, particularly welcome to those new UK MIDS reporters from freestanding group who are joining us for the first time for this next UK MIDS study. Just a little bit of housekeeping. Thank you everyone for getting this far. And um, to improve sound and visual quality for everyone, we've muted you all and switched your video off. You will be able to hear us and see the presentation, but we won't be able to see um, and hear you. So if you want to ask a question, please use the chat facility and type your question. We'll stop um, in the middle uh, to answer some of the questions. And then again at the end, um, just to clear everything up in case we have any further questions. So just an overview of what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to um, talk about what UK MIDS is and how it works, what research questions we've answered already, and uh, particularly our new study investigating PPH in midwifery units. And then I'm going to focus on the role of UK MIDS reporters. So UK MIDS is uh, the UK midwifery study system. It's funded by the National Institute for Health Research. And it's a collaboration between midwives across the country working in midwifery units and the UK MIDS research team here in Oxford. And essentially it's a national infrastructure to carry out research, observational studies and surveys in midwifery units. We have a network of UK MIDS midwife reporters in every midwifery unit across the country. So for the last three years, we've been working on studies in alongside midwifery units and this year, for the first time, we're welcoming freestanding midwifery units to UK MIDS. And the idea is that this infrastructure enables us to carry out high quality, large scale studies, producing evidence of on questions of importance to midwifery. The UK MIDS works, so the, the role of the UK MIDS reporter focuses on two elements. One is reporting and the other is data collection, data entry, and I'm going to separate those two things out. So what we mean by reporting, um, UK MIDS is an active reporting and research system. As I said, we have one or two reporters in all alongside and freestanding midwifery. And those reporters report to us monthly by email on the number of cases they've seen, uh, for each study in the previous month, including no cases if, if they haven't had any, and denominator data. So that's data on the number of women who um, have given birth in the unit in the previous month. And for some studies, we also ask about admissions. And we focus on uncommon events. Um, and once a case is reported by email, we then ask for um, data to be entered about that case and one comparison woman for each case, and that's a control woman. Um, and we do that um, using a secure web-based system called Open Clinica. And we only ever ask for anonymized information, so we don't have permission to hold names, addresses, postcodes, dates of birth, etc. And the kind of research questions that we have um, answered and are answering, um, we've, we've four funded studies so far in the rolling program. First study investigated outcomes for severely obese women, so women with a BMI of over 35 who were admitted for labour care in an alongside unit. And the study, the uh, results of that study were published last year. Our second study, um, we're just writing that up now and um, for submission for, for publication, investigated risk factors for neonatal admission. Uh, after birth in the alongside unit. Our third study, we've not long finished uh, data collection and we're just about to start analysis, investigated outcomes for women who were admitted for labour care to alongside units um, who had had a P PPH in a, in a previous pregnancy. And our fourth study that we're just about to start, that I'm going to be talking about a little bit more about later, is investigating women who have a PPH in a midwifery unit investigate risk factors for PPH in those circumstances, but also to look at management and outcomes for those women. So I'm going to pause here to um, answer questions. So what's the role of the UK MIDS reporter? 
when you're our main point of contact in um, your unit for UK MIDS, and your specific role is to identify cases for UK MIDS studies, report those cases to us every month, and then enter data from women's notes or your electronic system about those cases and controls. So moving on to the uh, PPH study, what do we mean or refer to cases? What, what are the cases that we're going to be investigating in that study? So a case for this study is any woman who gives birth in an alongside or freestanding midwifery who has a PPH requiring transfer to an obstetric unit or who receives care from an obstetrician for PPH without transfer to an obstetric unit. So it's important to note that we are not using um, a definition of PPH which um, is based on blood loss volume. And that's because there are uh, recognized difficulties in estimating blood loss volume. So we've chosen a very pragmatic definition of PPH requiring transfer. So that's likely to be um, at the more severe end of PPH. So if a woman has a PPH and it is determined that she needs transfer to an obstetric unit or needs to um, have care from an obstetrician for PPA, then that, that woman is eligible as a case for this study. So how do you identify your cases? Well, the key thing um, is to find the way that works best for you in your unit. We've learned over the years that there are innumerable different systems for um, recording women's details, um, both manual and electronic, and our reporters are incre incredibly ingenious in coming up with ways to identify uh, cases for our studies. So these are some of the suggestions that people have given us, some of the reporters um, that have worked with us over the last few years. You will have your own ideas, I'm sure. If you're stuck, please contact us um, and um, we, we will we'll do our best to help. Um, and also look out in our newsletter, you'll be receiving our quarterly newsletters and we often post, uh, we often have items in those newsletters about um, things like identifying new cases. So don't worry too much about it and please do get in touch if you get stuck. So I've also talked about controls or comparison women. Um, so what's a control? It's really, really important that your controls are all identified in exactly the same way and that they're identified in the way that we ask you to identify them. We want our controls to be um, truly um, the, the appropriate comparison for the cases. So for this study, um, a control is a woman who gave birth in a long side unit but wasn't a case, um, but not just any woman. We ask you to identify um, one control per case. And to do that, we ask you to uh, check the date and time that the, the case woman gave birth, and then identify the woman who gave birth in the midwifery unit, midwifery unit immediately before that case. And that woman is the control for that case. If the woman who gave birth in the midwifery unit immediately before the case was also a case herself, so you've had two women who are eligible as a case giving birth in your unit back to back, then you simply need to go back to, to the two previous women um, to, who, to uh, act as the controls for those two cases. So a control can't be a case, and you can't use the same control for more than one case, um, but following those rules, um, you, should, you should be okay. And again, if you're ever uncertain, please do check with us. So just to go into a little bit more detail about monthly reporting uh, and how that works. At the beginning of every month, all UK with all UK MIDS reporters will receive an email that looks like this. The first one you'll receive will be on the 1st of October. It will remind you that you're a UK MIDS reporter um, for the midwifery unit that you report for. If it happens that you report for more than one midwifery unit, and that, that is the case for a small number of our reporters, you will receive separate emails for each unit, and it will be clear which unit you're being asked to report for. And all you need to do is click on the link in the email. 
you don't need a login, you don't need a password, you don't need anything like that. Click in the email, you can see that this is the, the uh, representation of this kind of email that you'll get on the 1st of October, it's asking you for your data for September. Click on the link in the email and that will take you to a screen that looks like this. Again, you're reminded at the top, this is the unit that you're reporting for, this is the month. And here's the case definition again. We're asking for the number of women who had a PPH requiring transfer to an obstetric unit or who received care from an obstetrician for a PPH without transfer to an obstetric unit after giving birth in the middle of the unit in September 2019. Here, this is where you put that information in. Um, and importantly, if you've seen no cases that month, you simply enter zero. That's absolutely fine. If you have any questions about or queries about the case definition and you're not sure, there's a link here to check through to our website. And then this is the denominator data that we ask you about. Here, how many women in total gave birth in the middle of the unit and birth, and that's the same month again. We ask you to put in your email address here just so we can check that we're getting a report from the person we're expecting it from and any other information that you'd like to provide here. And then you simply click submit. When you click submit, you'll get an email confirmation confirming what you've um, reported. If, um, and that will also be sent, if there's more than one reporter in your unit, the confirmation email will also go to uh, the other reporter or reporters in your unit. If you then discover that um, you accidentally, accidentally put the wrong numbers in, you reported um, two cases instead of three, um, all you need to do is um, email us or get in touch and um, we'll help about that. We can always uh, correct any mistakes. That's absolutely fine. And then, um, yes, yeah, so you please report every month, um, even if you haven't had any cases that month. As I said, it's important that we, um, we get a no report if that's. Um, that's the case, and we, we really need the, uh, the data, data on births every month. The fact that all units take part in our studies makes the evidence from our studies that much stronger and that much more useful. So please, please do uh, take part and please try and keep on top of your monthly reporting. Um, we can always accommodate people who do um, start late or get a little bit far behind, a little bit behind, it's not a problem, but if you get too far behind, it can be quite difficult to catch up. So please bear that in mind. And finally, please keep a record of your cases and controls. Um, when you report a case um, in your confirmation um, email, you'll receive a unique case ID for each case. It's important that you record that alongside the identifying details for the case and the accompanying control in the log form in your white UK MIDS folder. If you're a new reporter for UK MIDS um, in a freestanding unit, you won't get to have received your folder, uh, but those are on their way to you uh, shortly. So you'll get everything you need in that folder. It's absolutely essential that you keep a record of the identifying details. If you remember, we are not allowed to hold identifying details here. So it's up to you to keep the link between the case ID for each case and the actual woman uh, that you've reported. And then we come on to data entry. So when you've reported a case, you will receive the case ID um, and you will be asked to enter data on that case and the one the accompanying control in our data entry system, which is called Open Clinica. You will need a username and a password to access Open Clinica and these will be emailed to you. So if you're an existing UK image reporter, you'll have that. If you're a new reporter, this will be sent to you uh, before the start of the study, before the 1st of October. The kind of data that we collect is, is as I said before, it's only anonymised. Um, the form has seven sections. It's important that you complete them in the order that they appear in the, for, in the in Open Clinica. The first section is very important information which confirms that the woman is a case, so please complete that section first. Um, we will be doing a, um, a dedicated data entry webinar this time in September, so please look out for that. And we'll also be posting 
a PDF of uh, the data entry form on our website so you can check to see the kind of data that we're going to be asking for. But it should all be available in women's notes. It should all be straightforward. Again, if you have any issues, please do contact. As I said, we'll be doing a dedicated uh, data entry webinar in September, um, and we'll be confirming the date of that shortly. You will be receiving your UK NIST folder, and in that there will be a guide for reporters which takes you through the reporting and data entry process. Um, that will also be available on our website. The version that's up on our website now is a version that we're updating for this new study. So you can have a quick look, um, but um, we'll be sending you out a new updated version in time for the new study. So the PPH study timetable is that from the 1st of September, we'd like you to start identifying your cases. So that's just keeping, keeping a record of them uh, for the PPH study. And on the 1st of October, you'll receive your first monthly reporting email, and that will be asking you about your September cases. Please do keep in touch with us. We'll send you things. It will send you the information that you need for the new study over the next couple of weeks. Um, but we're always available, um, Jenny, by phone um, or by email, both of us. Um, so please, if you, if you have any questions, please get in touch. We'll also be sending you our UK NIDS, uh, quarterly UK NIDS email, sorry, quarterly UK NIDS newsletters via email. The next one should be out in September. For the last few years, we've held uh, study days every two years for our UK NIDS reporters. The next one's likely to be towards the end of next year. We've had extremely positive feedback about these meetings, which are held centrally in Birmingham. They're free to attend. And we have travel bursaries for people who wouldn't otherwise be able to attend. So um, we've been, in the past, we've included um, talks from external speakers, information about current and uh, forthcoming UK mid studies, including results, um, and some really fun interactive sessions as well. So um, as I said, please do keep an eye out for information on those. Um, and welcome to attend. We also publish uh, the results of our studies in, in academic papers and conference presentations, and we will let you know about any of that that's forthcoming. And finally, being a UK MIT reporter uh, counts as CP, is evidence of, of CP, uh, CPD um, as a midwife and uh, contributes to your revalidation. So we can also provide you with a certificate as evidence of that. So please contact at any point if you'd like a certificate. It's just it's a, a screenshot from our website, so you can see the, um, web, the website address up here. Um, we're also active on Twitter, so if you are, please follow us and uh, look out for our, our updates there. The, the, um, we're updating our website, so there'll be more information coming over the next couple of weeks about the new study. And finally, if you're keen to be even more involved, and um, if there's a research question that you'd like answered, um, and you think we could um, we could address some or all of it using a UK mid study or survey? Please contact us, and our steering group will consider it, and uh, we can work with us to uh, to turn it into a, uh, a fully fledged study. So I think that's the the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. If anybody has any questions, please put them in the chat, and we'll um, address them afterwards. But in the meantime, I'll leave you with our contact details and as I said before if you have any questions at all please do get in touch we're really looking to hear thank you very much and I look forward to hearing from you and meeting you I hope in the future